Well, we're going to turn now to uh, a, a really good tech corner. All of our tech corners are good, but this one is, is fun. It, it's, a, it's a product we haven't really shown before. It's an air gauge from Western Gauge, and uh, we're going to show it to you on our, on our new setup here. Uh, here on, the, on our new set, we have a, a, a new uh, in development tech corner set, and Dirk's going to show it to you. And we're going to show you now uh, an air gauge from Western Gauge. So, Dirk, take okay. it away. So, uh, what we're going to be talking about today, as Mike said, is an air gauge. We haven't really talked about air gauges before. What we're going to look at today is the Micro 2 air comparator from Western Gauge. Um, but before we get into it, let me just tell you, for those of you who aren't familiar with an air gauge, let me give you kind of just a, a brief rundown on how they work. Um, you can't see it, but coming into the back of this box is uh, compressed air, uh, 60, 80, 100 PSI, not sure what we're running at right now. And coming out the front of the box, as we can see right here on our gauge cam, is uh, the gauging member. This is kind of the business end of the air gauge. And what you can't see, this is, this, there's two little orifices in this. Now this particular gauging member is going to be set up and we'll be measuring um, inside diameter. And now there's a little orifice on top and a little orifice on the bottom. And when I turn the air on, there is a stream of air coming out of both these holes. Now, as the workpiece gets closer to that orifice, it's starting to very mo modestly close off that hole. That creates back pressure in the air gauge. That, it, that back pressure can be very precisely measured, and it corresponds uh, to the distance of the workpiece from the orifice. Now, an air gauge, uh, in most cases, is not a direct reading, uh, is not a direct reading, get my part here. It's not a d direct reading um, measurement device. In other words, uh, in a little bit we're going to be measuring this half inch diameter hole. This is not going to actually measure the hole. An air gauge is more of a comparison, a comparator. I'm go we're going to compare a standard hole, a standard gauge calibrated hole here, to a workpiece. And it's that comparison that tells us whether a part is in spec or not. So, uh, again, before we get going into that, one of the uh, real advantages of air gauges, particularly on a shop floor, is because there is air coming out of these orifices, when you take a, a fresh piece right off a, a machining center, it might have a little dust, might have a little oil. The fact that there's pressurized air coming out of the gauge itself, it's actually blowing off some of the dust and some of the oil from that part. And also, basically, basically, it's also kind of cleaning itself as it goes. So from a, um, from a shop floor point of view, uh, air gauges are great. These are actually kind of cleaning the part as you go. They're also very easy to use. Uh, as we'll see, we're going to set up and take a measurement on there. An unskilled operator could be taught how to use this and how to um, uh, do a go, no-go test on, let's say, an inside diameter very quickly. So I'm going to set this up. Um, first of all, I'm going to set my tolerance limits. So I'm going to press my high-low button. And we can see up here, right now, I'm in a position to set my lower tolerance limit. And I can just cursor over. I can move these up and down. I'm going to leave it set for uh, 5 ten thousandths, 5 tenths under nominal. That's my lower limit. I press my high-low button again. Now I can set my upper tolerance limit. And we'll see that's uh, 5 tenths over nominal. Now I'm going to set my master, and we'll see a little bit further what this does. When you press master on the Micro 2 air gauge, it automatically takes the, um, the mean, the average, between the, the upper and the lower limit and sets it there. And of course, the average in this case is going to be 0 0.5000, which also is what the master is. So this wants to be, the master wants to be set to also what your gauging master is. In most cases, uh, it, it's going to be in the center. You're going to be looking at symmetric tolerance limits. Okay, we're actually now ready to take our measurements. So the first thing we need to do is zero the air gauge on our master. So our master is a precision 0 .5000 hole, calibrated, traceable to NIST. We're going to put this on our air gauge, and I'm going to zero it. Now what's actually happening here, technically, is the back pressure is being measured on this known part. And we've told, we've already told the device, we've already told the Micro 2 that this is a 0 .50000 master. So what we're essentially telling it is, given this back pressure, this is going to be a 
zero, 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 zero part. Now everything else from this point on is simply going to be compared to that. Now, I don't happen to have any machined parts, so we're just going to pretend that our uh, gauging master is a fresh part. So I have a whole batch of these waiting for me to do a test on. I simply slide it on, and it tells me display is green. This is a good part. Fine, I take it off, put it in my pass bin, take my next part, put it on, and so forth. Now, if you get a bad part, and I'm just going to fake a bad part by slowly, I'm going to try to take this right off the little orifice here, and that'll force it out of tolerance. Okay, there we go. So, here's what the operator might see if they had a bad part. Immediately see the, dis the display is red instead of green. Well, that's your immediate that's your immediate notification. Also, we have this bar graph that moves across, and you can see the end of the bar graph is beyond this little triangle, which is our upper limit. If it was too, uh, too small, it would be below this triangle in the, over, uh, um, in the lower limit. And we can see also it is showing us the actual measurement 0.500865, uh, my, uh, uh, sorry, inches. We're in a this will also, by the way, measure in metric or inches. We're in inches right now. So, and you see, it's a, dis it's a red display. So, really, the operator doesn't really need to know anything. They don't have to read anything. All they're looking for is a green display, red display. Green is pass, red is fail. Okay, now the other thing that we can do with this particular device, and again, this is the Micro 2, is we can measure total indicated reading. In other words, we can look at the total variance of this part um, as, let's say, in this case, an ID, we're going to rotate it 360 degrees. Now, even though this is a gauge setting master, it still isn't perfect. No part is perfect. So I'm going to press TIR, and it's flashing, letting me know I'm in that mode. And I'm just going to rotate our master 360 degrees here. And as I'm measuring it, as I'm turning it, it's being measured. And once, let's say once I've rotated it 360 degrees, I can hit our total indicated reading button here again, and it tells me that the total variance across 360 degrees is 20 micro inches. That's about half a micron. And if I press TIR again, now I'm back into measurement mode. So very quickly, you can do no-go, no tests on parts. You can look at the variance of a part. Obviously, this probe is set up for inside diameter. You can also get probes for outside diameter, uh, depth, a number of types of uh, dimensional measurements. Now, a couple of features of this particular, this particular product, the Micro 2 from Western Gauge, is some ergonomic design that went into it that I really like. One is this tiltable head. So regardless of whether I'm sitting at a bench or standing, I've got a really nice view of the display, and the display itself is um, one of the largest LCD displays for this type of device. So even if you're standing, you know, uh, you know, two, three feet away, this is very easy, or arm's length, let's say, uh, this is very easy to read this display. Uh, the other uh, option on this particular one is an RS-232 output. If I press the print button, I can output my latest reading to a printer, or I can actually send it to a laptop for further measurement. Um, so let's see what I touched on. Oh, yeah, I did touch on, yeah, cleans the part, easy to use. So there you go. That's, uh, that's air gauging. You'll see these a lot in shops because they are very easy to use, and also they're relatively expensive. I mean, this particular box right here is a little under $2,000. We're talking $1,985 list, I believe they told me. Um, you know, if you think about getting a uh, a, a good high quality uh, micrometer or caliper and a set of gauge blocks or a height gauge, you're easily up to that amount of money already. And those require uh, a certain amount of skill from the operator. For something like this, where you have a shop and you need to be, to be able to do go, no go tests really quick, um, this is, uh, air gauging is really the way to go. So uh, again, that's uh, air gauging and this is the Micro 2 from Western Gauge and uh, thanks to Western Gauge for sending us one of these. Okay, Mike. Yes, thanks Dirk. Thank you Western Gauge for showing us the Micro 2 Air Gauge, uh, another good tech corner there. And if you have a tech corner you'd like us to, uh, to show here on the show, go ahead and write us at qdl at qualitydigest.com and we'll get it on the air for you.